be able to cover it and get on the back in time. Absolutely. As Ryan now through Ciceri and Reisnick will step in. The first pitch in there for a strike. Like you said, mm -hmm. throwing fastballs, trying Absolutely. to get ahead. And so far, it's been effective by Ryan. We've seen the Wake Forest hitters be more and more willing to take pitches. And if they're willing to take pitches, start throwing hard strikes. Ryan, high leg kick, delivers another fastball that will be high. Doesn't quite work with the same speed as Mancini, but not a guy that messes around. He gets the gets the signal from the catcher and attacks. He works out of the stretch always. Some pitchers prefer it as he delivers. That was off speed and misses. Did you ever pitch or play ball growing up? And if so, were you a strictly out of the stretch guy or wind up? Yeah, with, so with I no never, runners on. Obviously. I never pitched. It was a public safety issue, but uh, I did play some shortstop, some second base, uh, and some center field growing up. I did a little catching, but I wasn't very good at it. Uh, I was also terrible at second base, but that's because I was a righty. Second baseman are almost always lefties. Um, although in this case, it looks like the Eagles do have a righty there, or excuse me, a, I'm a, I was a lefty, and so lefties at second base are considered horrific. But uh. Yeah, I played uh, some center field, some shortstop, and it was some good stuff. Very nice. As Ryan you? wanted that one and just misses. The count is now full. I myself played some middle infield growing up and then mm -hmm. outfield as I went into high school. You mentioned a public safety issue. Were you a little wild? Bob? Yeah, there was a uh, – you know, you don't want to see guys get hit left and right. So uh, perhaps it's better just to be the one throwing the first base. That's fair. It's a uh, – Thing about pitching is everybody might want to do it, but not everybody can do it. So sometimes uh, you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Credit to you for noticing that and oh, being was, aware. It was made clear to me, and then I realized <laughs> in hindsight that uh, perhaps so the, someone perhaps, perhaps told perhaps, you. perhaps the adults had a point. Yeah. <laughs> yes. As Ryan now out of the stretch, we've got a full count on Reisnick. He'll come set. The high leg kick and delivers, and he'll miss ball four. You know, a disappointing sequence of events there, letting that batter really get off the hook. Yeah, Ryan had him. He started him 0-1 with the fastball, and then a good battle. And now the Demon Deacons have a man aboard for Pierce Bennett, the sophomore right-hander, the only right-hander that the Eagles pitching staff will face until two-hole. Pierce Bennett out of the seventh hole, now stepping in. One for two today with a strikeout. He scored a run on the Grand Slam earlier, and he'll pop this one to center. Looks routine for Walsh. He's under it. Got it. And two away, one pitch, one out by Ryan. Yeah, just the exact at bat you need to get back as a pitcher after giving up a walk, like we said. When we said at the beginning of the game, the Deacons and their walks are going to be a story throughout. It's a matter of mitigating the damage those cause and you know getting an out right after. Perfect event for Ryan, and all of a sudden, two out with one on is a lot better than one out with one on. Absolutely, and now the lefty Danny Corona, freshman, stepping in, 226 on the season as we'll get a check on the runner. Corona with the worst batting average among starters here today. Yes, an unfortunate last name to go with it. Yes. Corona on its own, I I first thought of, as he'll pop this one up, will it be playable for Stallman? It is. And makes the catch. And he does, and Ryan is out of it. But, yes, you mentioned the Corona uh, last name. Obviously, coronavirus took the world by storm, impacted both these rosters. Shaw, you met in his sixth year, um, COVID year, mm -hmm. now, today, uh, Wake Forest, not as affected considering they start a lot of freshmen and sophomore. And look who's stepping back onto the rubber. It's Rhett Louder. Wow. Are you surprised by that? I'm not because I don't think we saw much action. Again, folks, we've got the watchtower in our way. Uh, but this is your ace, and he's hot. And Maybe, but the longer things go on, the, the, the math doesn't lie. The metrics don't lie, both on the saber side and practicality. 
guy's guy leaves a pitch hanging with the dude on. This could look a lot different, a lot fast. That's that's true, and perhaps it's a propensity to lead to the bullpen, but certainly playing with fire here. Yes, that the Eagles coming to the plate. This could have a role as well, or five, six, seven. So not the heart of the order for the Eagles, but. Parker Landwehr will be the first bat to step in, and he is two for two. We mentioned cycle wash. He has a single and a double. Not much of a cycle wash, but, again, we're trying to wish it into existence, perhaps. Yes, we are manifesting the triple. <laughs> or a home run, for that matter. You ever seen a triple lot? I have. I have seen a couple in my day. Not in your not day. I've I've been to a lot of games, Michael. Fair enough. So we head to the bottom of the sixth. Louder still on the mound. He will face the righty land where to begin things. Out of the windup and delivers is louder, and it will be a ball. But I've got to say this, Michael. It doesn't look like he's lost any pep in his step in terms of velocity. No, absolutely not. We'll see as the inning goes on if that's an issue for his location. Landwehr will pop this one up. Center field, that ball carried a little bit. Looks like we got the wind blowing out now. But... It is retired there by Tommy Hawk. One away, two pitches, louder, quickly out of it. Yeah, perhaps the good move to bring him back. It's quick and efficient. It would appear that way. Although we always know that history sometimes takes a deviation in the 11th hour. So we will see. As Burns now stepping in, he is... The one that put the ball over the fence for the Eagles. Yeah, his first home run of the year. Excellent time to have it. He'll pop this one up back behind us, foul to even up the count at one and one. So the Eagles and Demon Deacons tied at four, folks. You're seeing a doozy. Both teams with six hits. The Demon Deacons with one error, the Eagles with none as. Louder misses to Burns. Wake Forest baseball with pretty good program, especially putting together a good season this time out. Burns again shows bunt. Perhaps the shift also playing a role. There's no third baseman over there, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Now the third baseman will come a little bit closer towards the line. But not much. On a three-one, you think they would be the cream like this one here? And he he'll take it. Yes, ball four. The Eagles with a runner on. The Demon Deacons bullpen still no movement. Four relievers have given up three runs or less this season, uh, with a minimum of 10, 10 innings pitched. That is Crawford, Wabe. Crawford, Wade, Gabe, Global, Global, Golub, Golub, as that one Golub. is Golub. Uh, we'll deal with that name if he <laughs> if he comes into the game. And then Caden, Manassi, and Derek Crum. Those five have yet to give up over three runs this season. So the, it's not like the – Demon Deacons are holding back their bullpen for lack of trust. They just trust Louder in this situation to get themselves out of it. As McNulty attempted a bunt the first pitch, he fouled it back, and now he'll take a strike, and he'll be down 0-2. Yeah, an interesting decision there to uh, reflect the bunt with one out already. Yeah, interesting, again, and this time it'll be a swinging butt foul. Second time we've seen McNulty kind of get jammed up. That was a more defensive swing, obviously, down 0-2. It's more difficult. 
Absolutely. Just trying to find his pitch and fighting off the ones that maybe are on the fence. Mm-hmm. Stallman now on deck. And Walsh awaiting in the hole. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Eagles four, Demon Deacons four. Louder the pitch. McNulty the swing and the miss. Two away. Good pitch there by Rhett Louder. Two away. What do you think? You think that this could be – we said it last inning when Vetrano stepped up to the plate. I thought that that could be the last hitter Louder faces. Surely, I guess I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but again well, – It's hard for us to speculate fully with something blocking our information to take, <laughs> but I don't know. If Louder, if, uh, if Louder keeps on getting this kind of generation inning after inning, I think you'll leave him. Remember, his only hiccup was in the first inning, and since then he's been more spotless than not. Absolutely, as he'll now come into the stretch. He started Stallman out with a ball. He'll deliver this pitch, and that also misses. Interesting. Maybe things change here if you get two on. The nine hole waits on deck, so I don't think we've see, we'd have see we see a move quite yet. Certainly the fear factor would get somebody working up in the bullpen at the very least. Mm-hmm. And a righty awaits. That's interesting to note because – now it's 3-0 and on Stallman because two lefties begin the Eagles lineup uh, at the top with Chalumet and Leary both being lefties and then Vetrano, a lefty, in his own right. So I think that could play a role. I think we will see a switch after this, but they're relying on Louder to get out of this, and he comes back to Stallman with a fastball right down the pipe. I don't think Stallman has the green light out of the eight hole or not in this at least high leverage situation with the game tied. So he takes that one and he'll take this one, another strike. He thought it was a ball. Yeah, interesting. We've seen the umpire here wait for these guys to make a few steps before calling strikes. It's not the first time it's happened. And we saw Gambino remark to home plate umpire Danny Collins about something when a called third occurred, I believe it back in the third inning as Burns will be off with a pitch as it's three, two with two outs. And that'll be a hit by Stallman down to left as Stallman will now take second. Wow. And heads up base running pays off there for sure. How about that by Lucas Stallman? He knew that no first baseman was behind him. So he knew he could get off there a little bit and he just took second base. So now we've got second and third. Two outs, Barry Walsh stepping up. We saw Walsh make an impactive play, impactful play in the first inning with a diving catch, more of a sliding catch, and now he'll have a chance to do damage on the offensive end as he and Coach Gambino meet while a pitcher-catcher conference is going on. These are the things you just love about baseball, how fast things can change in a heartbeat. You'll hear people say that baseball is boring, baseball is archaic, baseball doesn't matter anymore. But, folks, one double like this, and all of a sudden the game is alive and back on track, and the Eagles are threatening here with two runners in scoring position. Yeah, we'll see. I I believe Stallman, they will say, single the left with an advance on the throw, which I think is a good good score there because with nobody on, I don't think Stallman takes that bag. Certainly not padding the stats, to say the least. (laughs) But Walsh will step in, louder out of the windup, and that one had some heat. He has certainly not lost any velocity. No, it's like a Verlander mentality. Even going deep into these games, he continues to throw it out and throw it out at the spot he needs to. Again, for you folks just tuning in, this is Rhett Louder on the mound in the bottom half of the sixth. We tied at four. Eagles out hitting the Demon Deacons seven to six. As Walsh will ground that one to first, and that will get Louder out of the jam. Yeah, the magician on the mound yet again finds a way to make it work. Nick Kurtz easily over to the bag, and again Gambino meeting with home plate umpire Danny Collins. This exchange lasting a little bit doesn't look any hostile but certainly something to keep an eye on. Oh, there's some. Uh, now now yeah, there's, it's... There's some disagreement in the yeah. arms. 
Now we are getting a little disagreement. The Italian and Gambino flashes for a moment there, folks. So he is not happy. And who can blame him? Some questionable calls. Although, to be fair and to be unbiased, they've been on both sides thus far. That is true. That is true. And as we head to the top half of the seventh. If anything, the strike zone is like those things that used car lots. Seems to be flipping around and moving in the wind a little bit. <laughs> I like that. I like that. We'll have Joey Ryan still. The righty remains. No action in the Eagles pen. That's a great call. I think that we will get a pitching change. I would be very surprised if Louder comes back out for the two lefties at the top half of the Eagles lineup. And then, obviously, Vetrano, like we mentioned, another lefty. So three of the next four will be lefties for the Eagles. And Louder, a righty in his own regard. Ryan with a couple more warm-up pitches. Quite the game Absolutely. so far. We cannot There's complain about that. This one had the makings of a of a good one. Two teams coming in, winners of the last two. The Demon Deacons typically have had some hot bats, which is why if you're Coach Gambino, I think you're a little cautious. You obviously wanted those runs to come in. You know that this Demon Deacons ball club might be hard to slow down for long. Again, we mentioned the fact that they have scored 20-plus runs in three games. They've also scored 13 runs against nationally ranked Liberty, and 20, one of those 20 runs came against Georgia Tech, 27-7 in that one, and a win as Ryan delivers to Hawk a fastball right by him. Again, we wish we had velocities, but we do not. But that was right by Hawk. We also don't have a pitch count. We, I believe we can find that out with this handy-dandy home stats. Uh, live stats, which we will try to get to you. As Hawk will, will ground one through the left side for a base hit. Good piece of hitting there by Hawk. Just took it with him. Yeah. To the opposite side. And always and, dangerous when the leadoff man gets on. Yep, back to the top of the order. Nick Kurtz with a guy on. This is a big at-bat for Ryan. Certainly doesn't want to give Brock Wilkin another chance for an impactful hit. Last time out, he had a grand slam to even things up. And this one... So now we're back to dead even in, in both runs and hit column. Couldn't ask for a more even contest thus far. Ryan comes set, slowly working out of the stretch. That one missed high and outside. Ryan wanted it. He did hit a spot. Uh, trying to work away here to the Demon Deacon hitters. They tried to work away on Hawk, and he just went with it. To the left side, good piece of hitting there by the freshman. And now another freshman in Nick Kurtz. Looked like Ryan tried to check on the runner there, and I couldn't tell. Did his feet get tangled up? No, I think he was so afraid of getting back, he just dove. I'm talking about Ryan on the check. Oh, I did not notice that. It looked like Ryan got a little tangled up there. As he'll now deliver to Kurtz and good stop by Burns. I couldn't tell if he got crossed up or what happened but maybe the excitement of trying to get it over there quickly did give a little check on the runner potentially we'll have a snap throw ryan with 14 pitches thus far for him in this outing the delivery good way to come back on kurtz two and one now the fastball by Ryan as now the shadows peering. They have crossed into the outfield. We got a little shift again as McNulty, the shortstop, playing on the right side of second base for the lefty Kurtz. That was a good pitch and doesn't get the call. I wonder if Coach Gambino saying a few words potentially could hurt the Eagles. Maybe. I mean, these umpires, they, uh, Everybody knows Joe West, and everybody knows Angel Hernandez, and 
you know, maybe there's a doppelganger in the audience today. Uh oh. But certainly, you know, the umpire tries to remain as impartial as possible. As Kurtz lines one down the right field line, it will just be foul. Definitely good to get from a 3 1 to a 3 2. Maybe Ryan this time will throw it down low again and throw hard. We've got no action in the Eagles' pen. Yeah, interesting. So, certainly something to keep an eye on as Ryan battles against Kurtz. The top of the order now for the Demon Deacons has a chance to do trouble again. Hawk got it started with a grounder through the left side. He'll now run on the pitch. That one is popped into shallow center, and it'll get down. It gets down. And now Hawk doesn't – wow, Hawk's taking third base. How about that smart base running by yeah. Hawk? So that one was looped into shallow left center. Again, we mentioned that McNulty was not there because he was playing on the right side of second base. So you had a little – little mix up i don't want to say mix up because that would imply that they each player had a chance at it shaw you met had to go a long way walsh had to go a long way stallman perhaps had to go the longest way and i don't think ryan picked up that he had to go and attend to third base and by the time burns realized that he hustled over but in catcher's gear it's hard to close that distance yeah hawk took third base great base running he was on the move, it looked like that was a hit and run because he was stealing and the swing. And now, obviously, Wilkin, who just hit a grand slam, has done it again. A three-run shot by Brock Wilkin. The sophomore has done it again. And another beautiful swing, just absolutely feeling it. The exact same spot, folks. Maybe a few feet to the right this time. Talk about having a place you want to send it. Holy cow, the left center. And how about that? The, wow. Wilkin wow. dapping up teammates. Him and Hawk are quite the difference in, in physical stature. Wilkin standing at about 6'5", Hawk at, a, at listed at 5'6". But credit to Hawk, he got things started with a single. Kurtz keeps it going with a single, and Wilkin with a home run. I'm just really impressed by these bats by Wake Forest. You knew they couldn't stay, keep them quiet, and I'm really impressed by the youth of Wake Forest battling, obviously down 4 nothing to begin things here, and now just like that, 7-4 to four after two home runs by Wilkin in the last three innings. Yeah, and you can just see it. These fastballs, when they hang high, it's why we've been saying throw low. These Wake Forest bats, they capitalize, and oh, boy. Two swings can change the game, and folks, it's not looking good right now for Ryan. No, and again, no action in the Eagles pen. Coach Gambino is going to ride it out with Joey Ryan. He hasn't surrendered more than three earned runs all season. So hopefully that trend continues and he's able to keep it under a threshold that would be manageable for the Eagles to come back for. And so the critical thing here is to just realize it is a new inning, right? I mean, there's no base runners, no outs. If you think about it as a three-run home run, that's only going to hinder your ability to get the strikes across the plate. So really on Ryan to locate the zone here and get back to it, and he does with the strike. Yes, 2-1 and one now on the three-hole hitter, Michael Tersoni. The Demon Deacons have taken a 7-4 lead with two home runs by Brock Wilkin in two of the last three innings, as we noted Quite the contest here so far today at the Harry. The Demon Deacons out hitting the Eagles now seven nine to seven, and now Ryan behind on the hitter three and one. Again, a Demon Deacons ball club that can swing it, and finally they're showing that. And that one just missed. I don't know where that missed. Yeah, Looks well, pretty good to me. Another critical walk by the Deacons, just showing their prowess at the plate, both in the terms of skyrocketing over the left center field, but also just creeping over a first base on four pitches outside the zone. Yeah, you mentioned off the top how they have been prone to taking walks, Yeah, and that's exactly what they did the there. The Deacons lead the ACC in their fourth in the nation, folks. I'm sure their hitting coach specializes with them on it, and they show it today. Absolutely, as... 
Ryan out of the stretch delivers to Tinsman. Now we've got a little movement in the Eagles pen. We'll have the warm up catcher jogging down there to help out. That hitting coach that you mentioned, Bill Salentio, comes from Siena. 13th year. He has followed uh, Tom Walter as that's another hit for the Demon Deacons to Walsh. She has a little trouble with it. And first to third goes the runner, Tersini Tinsman, has done it with a single, his second hit of the game. And first and third, no outs for the Demon Deacons. Now we got double barreled action in my yeah. here. So clearly the Gambino family feels they need to switch it up instead of getting criminally crushed with the ball here. Yes, yes as, folks, that was a mob joke. Again, we we with Michael in the booth, you have the promise of some pop culture commentary. Yes. Yeah. Some, so, some questionable takes. To review thus far for the Demon Deacons, we've got four hits this inning. One of them being a three-run home run and also a walk by Michael Tersoni that puts us in the position we are currently. First and third for the Eagles, no outs. For the Demon Deacons, that is. No outs recorded by the Eagles. And now we'll get a conference with the entire infield. And what's your message right now as the coach going out there? How do you try to calm down, Ryan? How do you kind of try to recenter this game? I mean, three runs is not the end of the world. You've got three more innings of baseball to play on the offensive side. What's your message to your team right now? You know, this is a, a batter in Ciceri who is powerful, 305. And I, I think you tell Ryan to, uh, to be careful, know the game plan. Certainly they've had – meetings about each one of these Wake Forest hitters. They know the scouting report and get this guy out and then your ground ball away from getting out of the inning. Uh, so keep keep the damage uh, as minimal as possible, but this is a big big at bat. Keep the double play intact and then oh, try to get a double play. Yeah, it can't be understood how critical it is to get it out here, whether by strikeout or by air. Any advancement of the runners really poses a serious threat to traditional runs to come across the board. As that one is fouled back, as our heater has clicked <laughs> back on. Synonymous to the Wake Forest bats heating up here, Michael. As Apparently so. It's a uh, good indicator. The Eagles have struggled in the last couple of frames to keep those hot bats quiet. A big swing there by Ciceri. He's 0 of 3 today with a strikeout. And now Ryan is a pitch away from giving him his second K of the day. I can't tell who that is in the pen. It looks like John West up and throwing. I can't tell the other arm for the Eagles. Ryan comes set and the delivery just misses the outside corner. Great pitch there by Ryan. One and two now on Ciceri, the lefty. We'll get another lefty on deck for the Demon Deacons. We have a lefty warming in the Eagles' pen. Ryan comes set, delivers right up the middle. That'll get through a single. We'll have another first to third movement by the Demon Deacons, and this game has opened up eight to four now. Absolutely. Like we said, the critical thing there was trying to get the runners to not advance with an out and repeat, but they run up a runner well. So it's a really tough situation for Ryan to get. So still no outs for the Eagles. And now we'll get a pitching change. We will get the lefty arm. We'll get that information to you as fast as we can, who that is. Lefty arm might be as tough outing by Ryan in his second inning of work as we will get a pitching change. You can see his head's down all the way. He's just not happy with how he played today. Yes, and it appears the new arm in for the Eagles. 
will be number 22. Charlie Kuhn. The left-hander Charlie Kuhn made 20 appearances out of the Eagles' pen last season and recorded a 4.55 ERA. He was a freshman last season, uh, made his collegiate debut against Duke, and did not give a hit, and struck out two in an inning of work. So college career got off to a good start, and thus far this season he's had a decent Decent year, uh, seven seven one ERA, but I don't think that's indicative uh, because we've seen him in his last two and two thirds, excuse me, three and two thirds of work, uh, give up just one earned run. Yeah, excellent production numbers. So three, the last three and two thirds of work that. Kuhn has had, and that is including two appearances against Louisville, one in which he gave up an earned run in one and a third innings. But three strikeouts. He's got 12 on the year, and just one intentional walk, three hit by pitches, and six walks. So Two to one strikeout to K rate, uh, K to walk ratio. Not as good as the starter for the Demon Deacons, Rhett Louder, but certainly not. Could be worse. Could be worse. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, at this point now, it's about trying to keep the damage control, maybe minimize to one more run, and then hopefully get the bats moving at this point. So eight to four is your score, folks. The Demon Deacons putting up four runs in this top half of the seventh. They've capitalized on some pitching errors. Yeah, I would say just missed spots, perhaps. A couple to Brock for, yes, Brock the Tank Wilkin. We, we should come up with a, I'm sure... The Rock Demon Deacons. Ball, yeah, seriously. That's a good one. As Kuhn now delivers a ball to begin things for the left-hander, Jake Reinsnick. Yeah, Brock Longball Woken is the story of this game. Seven Absolutely. RBIs. Seven of the eight RBIs for the Demon Deacons, and now threatening again with first and third. Talk about Kuhn. a guy who got the team back in the game. Certainly, both times he swung the bat, he's made the difference. Mm -hmm. Kuhn threw one over to first base. And just to check on the runner, nothing doing there. Decent sized lead, but I don't think well, he's going to. Well, we've just up here before. So it's certainly the BC Eagles, you know, there's a sense of optimism that maybe is diminishing, but the game is not over. Game is not over whatsoever. And we've seen the Eagles put up four runs in the first inning themselves, so certainly capable. Yes, and the idea that there's a comfortable lead could certainly lead to um, maybe inadequate play from Wake Forest. So certainly the Eagles have capitalized on the steps. Absolutely, as Kuhn delivers a ball again. So now we've got two and one on Rysik. The left-handed bat facing the left-hander Kuhn. The heater has shut off. Hopefully the bats for Wake Forest have done the same. Kuhn with a long pause now delivers and he'll miss. Perhaps didn't get a grip on that curveball. And now three and one. You don't want to load the bases. No, absolutely not. <laughs> you do not want to load the bases for Pierce Bennett because he will make you pay. 17 RBIs on the season for Bennett, which is the second lowest in terms of starters for the Demon Deacons. But this one's trouble, and it falls. That was a high looping fly ball kind of in the zone of K 
confusion, I guess, between first base, second base, and That's right field. That really difficult no man's land where so many of these balls seem to go today. It was no man's land. I think the wind, the wind is a little, it's quiet now. So I think that was just a, you couldn't really place a ball any better in terms of how the alignment was. I think gold might have overrun it. Absolutely. I think also the overhang in that ball kind of died quickly. Yeah. Like it was not in the air very long. Very misleading. Sometimes those sky shots like that, they hang and they hang and you're able to get right under it, but that ball fell quick. You're right. And fortunately for the Eagles, the run at third had to hold, expecting the ball to be caught. So now we've got bases loaded and a hit by pitch. Kuhn has hit him, and another run will come in for the Demon Deacons. It's now nine to four. Not the greatest top half of the seventh inning, Michael. No, sometimes you uh, you have a good inning, and sometimes you have a uh, clearly bad inning. And this is what happened, folks listening, to be the latter. Yes, yeah, so now Danny Corona will step in. He recorded the last out of the top half of the sixth, and then we'll get Tommy Hawk, who led off this game. For, or let off this inning for the Demon Deacons. Vetrano with a diving play. And he was able to make the out at third base, uh, second base, excuse me. And then McNulty tried to turn two. It Ball looked like, away. yes, I couldn't tell who was covering the, I think Kuhn was covering the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, Ball went under his glove, trickled away. And two runs come in to score. The runner at third scored, obviously, and then all the way coming around from second base after the Aaron throw was the second run. And now Tommy Hawk, who led off this inning, steps in with the Eagles with their first out recorded. Kuhn misses. He appears frustrated that they couldn't turn two there and you can't blame him but that's a tough play good yeah, good that's a, stop that, that's a difficult play even for a first baseman to make it's a lot to ask a pitcher to get that glove down and get that footwork lined up it's it's easy when you see them do it on a routine basis but to hustle over there with the anxiety and the frustrations of the game yeah it's a difficult to ask for any pitcher i'm glad you mentioned the footwork because i think that oftentimes we forget that mm -hmm. they're running over there they don't know where to, to put their foot you know yeah. and they're blind and sticking it back there hoping to make contact with first base. And, and if you're not a uh, first baseman, you don't have the peripheral area and, like, you know, the repetition to get that foot exactly where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So often these first basemen just turn around and they're in the perfect spot. If you're a pitcher, you're used to the mound. You're used to an incline. You're not used to a first base attack like that. Exactly. And the official stats have credited shortstop Sam McNulty with a throwing error uh, on that play. So not an error by Kuhn, but – a play he a certainly fair, a rather fair play that throw certainly cost the, the run so it appeared certainly that he thought he should have made it as he was frustrated and it now leads to a four pitch walk by Tommy Hawk and this is the moment too where I think they need to just have like a mount visit and certainly try to rekindle and recool things it looks um, like uh excuse me it looks like Burns is trying to rally the troops calling out the defensive coverage, perhaps bunt coverage, with a guy stepping in now in the top of the order, Nick Kurtz. And that's the wisdom of that. Um, that's the wisdom right there. Peter uh, Burns, you know, senior. Yeah, of a senior catcher who just understands how the game flows. Just trying to basically trying to like coordinate everybody and just to centralize on making sure they get out of the inning because you can't you can't swing for the fences and you can't get runs on the board if you're still fielding defense. So Kuna's now missed five in a row, and again we'll have action now in the Eagles' pen as Burns will go out, try to calm Kuhn's anxieties down. Yeah, and this is just the, the catcher and the, the pitcher just trying to get on the same page, trying to figure out how they want to play things. And I'm sure uh, from Burns' perspective, trying to urge Kuhn's to keep it low in the zone, mm -hmm. without a doubt. A three-run blast here would, would really demoralize the Eagles, who are already struggling in this inning. Yeah, and again, a double play still intact. However, the shift is on for Kurtz, the left-hander, as we noted. 
A strike there. Kuhn bounces back. Again, that pitch was at the letter. Something that that, that call has been there some instances, and some instances it hasn't. Yeah, it's very it's very hot and dry, just like our heater today, folks. And sometimes you get the call, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're, you're hot, and sometimes you're cold. So certainly a crooked number here by the Wake Forest Demon Deacon. Seven runs in this top half of the seventh to open things up 11 to four. A good pitch there by Cooney bounces back and now one and two ahead on Kurtz. But guess who's on deck? Brock Longball Wilkin. <laughs> and we can just see history here, folks. A potential walk in the making if he's able to hang on potentially for three pitches. And oh boy. Long ball is not the guy you want to see come to the plate. We don't want that as Kuhn is able to get a strikeout of Kurtz. But Wilkins stepping in now, he has two home runs, and you've got to believe he has all the confidence in the world. And this is the first time he'll face a lefty. So he gets – I don't know. Wilkins splits off the top of my head. That would uh, take our production staff a minute to get that going but Kuhn certainly has to be careful two runs on uh, two runners on excuse me you don't want to give Wilkin an opportunity for his second three-run shot of this inning absolutely it can't be stated how important it is to keep this ball low in the zone this is a guy who when you leave it up high I mean just a beautiful swing we've seen it twice already you just you don't want to see a third round of that yeah I'd say try to work away too we've seen uh Wilkin pull both his home runs to left left field as Kuhn got him started with off speed inside that caught that inside corner. So he's up one and nothing now as the high leg kick delivers. That one's in the dirt. No advancement. Great stop there by Burns. Absolutely. Kicking it right out there. Just a veteran catcher trying to get distance between him and the batter. Just really, really good technique. So Kuhn steps back on the rubber now. I wonder what's going through his mind. Knows that the damage can be a little salvaged with Stranding two runners on, but certainly Wilkin does not want to let that happen as he'll take a big hack, foul it off his ankle. You knew the intentions there of Wilkin. Yes, that was headed about 380 feet in a different direction, folks. But unfortunately for Wilkin, he did not get his third shot of the day. So now Kuhn will have the chance to put him away. One and two on Wilkin. Two outs. In this top half of the seventh, the Eagles will have the top of the order coming up. And again, long layoff, so I really imagine Rhett Louder is done for the day. And great pitch by Charlie Kuhn. Retires Wilkin looking by way of the K. And after seven and a half, we've got the seventh inning stretch. The Eagles for... The Demon Deacon seven. What do you tell your batters there now? What's the approach? How does it change? Are you perhaps more patient now? We've got it. We do have a new arm in for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a um, there's an element. Of don't be the hero, right? When you're down seven runs, one plate appearance statistically cannot change this game. It just simply can't. So the element is team ball, in the sense that you want to find your pitches. You want to do what you need to do, and you want to chip away bat by bat, and hitting solo shot after solo shot is not feasible, nor is it the right way to play this game. What's really, really important for the Eagles is to realize they have three more innings to hit the ball, use those opportunities, and slowly try to work back at that deficit. And I think that's going to be the key to success here. Absolutely. So we do have a new arm. It is lefty Crawford Wade, another great name for the Demon Deacons. Crawford was one of those guys we noted that he has only given up one run, a minimum of uh, 10 innings pitch, that is. And for, it's one guy whose name we're sure of pronouncing the right way. Yes, he is, exactly. <laughs> Through 15 and two-thirds innings of work, Crawford Wade has surrendered one run. One earned run, that was against NJIT of all teams on all the way back on February 27th. So certainly Wade is a hot arm. Interesting move here 
by head coach Tom Walter in his 13th season with the Demon Deacons to put in weight in this situation because it's low leverage. You never know when he'll be needed later in the game. But again, the lefty arm, I think, has a lot to do with it, considering three of the next four batters in this Eagles lineup are lefties. So the Demon Deacons, who coming in are off to their best start since 2006 with a 19-6 and record. And Rafe Shayamet trying to mount the early implications of a comeback, dare we say. Uh, starts with Shayamet here as Crawford delivers. Absolutely. And just like that, taking the strike. I think that is the right approach. The idea of just hacking for the fences here is not the right solution. And it's good to see there's still some patience in the BC lineup. So Crawford, and again, it looked like Shalumet attempted, yeah, very, was going to attempt to bunt. Again, we've seen Eagles not capable of getting it down. And a very questionable call there as well. Just uh, yeah, some interesting stuff there. But yeah, 0 2, and now he's going to be defensive to say the least. So Shalumet will take high for a ball. Crawford, perhaps a waste pitch there. He had 22 pitches pitched against Coastal Carolina in his last outing, and Shawnee Met gets things going with a single to start things off. The Eagles team, this Eagles team is not going to die after that that last inning. No, Baldwin is somewhere in the building, and that spirit is alive and well. There's still some emphasis on just getting one hit at a time, one base runner at a time, and clearly the leadoff man getting on after being down 0-2 in the count. Excellent, excellent progress. So now the two-hitter Leary, who's hot, stepping in. And he'll swing and foul that one back. Leary with a hit and scored a run earlier this game. Like you mentioned, the record, 10 home runs through 25 games, a team record. Mm -hmm. Leary, a sophomore. Crawford delivers. That one's punched. Out to right, he could have 11, he dies. Home run, Cameron Leary, just like that, the Eagles get two bad. Absolutely, what a critical, critical hit. Excellent, like we said, finding the right pitch and punching it through. And interestingly enough, the left side of the field has been dominated by Wake Forest at home runs, and the right side is Boston College all the way with their second now in the game. Yeah, that one bounced off the scoreboard. And Crawford has surrendered his first earned runs since all the way back on February the 27th. And he does it against, gives up two hits to two lefties. Uh, the lefty arm himself, and now will face the righty in gold, who takes a strike on the inside corner. That one looked a little inside as yes, well. Yes, we, uh, we certainly have our bias, but uh, Mr. Collins over here is maybe not doing the best work behind the plate. And same spot and same result, a called strike gold. Ben's at the knees. He did not like it, I don't think. And now Crawford. Crawford works fast as well. He's already in the set, already delivering. And gold with a shot. That one's going to get over the head of the left fielder. He'll go for two. He's got two. The season-leading doubles hitter has done it again. Three straight hits for the Eagles. Absolutely. This no. game's not over. Yeah. Of course, uh, just like that, like we said, one hit at a time. And the critical thing to note there was the left fielder, Cerise, really misplayed that ball from the get-go, went right over his head, and there's really no excuse for that. So whether it was lost somehow in the clouds or maybe he didn't time it off the bat right or the sound was a little weird, still in the area. But, hey, no complaints, and there's a second baseman, or there's a guy on second now and no outs. Yeah, it looked like Cerise was stuck in quicksand almost, he confused on which way to either turn around or go backwards or go forward, I should say. Mm -hmm. You seem kind of uh, conflicted, and when the ball's in the air for two seconds, you got to make up your mind fast. So it looks like Coach Gambino is talking to home plate umpire Collins, and he'll go back to the dugout to consult with an assistant. I don't know if we're going to get a swap here, but Toronto is a lefty facing the lefty and Crawford Wade. But again, Vetrano has had damage. I doubt you'd ever pinch hit him. 
I agree. I think he's had some success in this game already. I think at this point you want to keep the bats together unless there's a very good reason to pull one out. So Vetrano will have a chance to keep the momentum going. The Eagles have answered the Demon Deacons seven runs in the top half of the seventh with three hits and two runs so far in their bottom half. Vetrano stepping in. He's got the capability of keeping the momentum going, and he'll take a first pitch curveball by Crawford Wade. Good pitch. A beautiful pitch there, too, with a very nice drop at the end. We've got some action in the Wake Forest pen. Looks like a righty up and throwing. Wade comes set. He'll deliver. But Toronto reach for that one, and he'll poke it out to center. Hawk is there, and he drops the ball. Tyler Hawk dropped the ball. The Eagles weren't expecting it, but Gold is able to come across because that ball was hit deep. I don't know what happened to Hawk there. Something's going on in the outfield for the Demon Deacons, and right now they need to figure it out fast or there's going to be more errors and producing more runs. Perhaps that one he just took a little nonchalantly because he didn't put two hands on as the land where singles one through the left side, but Toronto will have to hold at third. <laughs> As we have returned from break with a splash, a couple technical difficulties, but we're back in play. Land where keeps the momentum rolling. Michael, this is what you have to love. If you're Coach Gambino, the Eagles not bowing down at all. Absolutely. And like they were saying, just one at bat at a time, like one pitch at a time, just waiting for the right thing to come across the plate and not forcing a comeback, but instead welcome it when the right opportunity presents itself. And we're seeing that mixed with some critical errors from Wake Forest that have turned out quite nicely. Yeah, that error by Hawk could be detrimental. Could have been the first out of the inning for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And now Burns steps in, who we've seen hit a home run so far today. He is taking that one, and the count is even. One and one, first and third for the Eagles. No outs for this Demon Deacons pitching staff. We had a pitching change, and guess who it is? Golub, who he said we had trouble pronouncing. Golub. Golub. Goal of Golub. <laughs> and he missed there. So now two and one on Burns. And you guys, you know, it's hard to see over, over radio, but the enthusiasm is back and it's finally on a different side of this field. Yes, as the Eagles dug out now with the emphasis, Burns just took a strike. He didn't like that call. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody seems to like Mills or nobody seems to like Collins' calls except Collins. But again, you can't blame them for everything. But certainly, you would think right now that the side that's not down four runs wouldn't be celebrating this much. And you would probably think the scores are reversed. So the BC Eagles are coming back to life. Yeah, tying run on deck, and that's McNulty. Burns just popped that one foul. He's going to be in a battle here now, two and two against Golub, who. Has a 104 ERA, quite the season he's putting together, and 17 and a third innings pitch, just two earned runs. Thankfully, we've already seen one reliever get dismantled with glorified stats. So. This one could be trouble, caught by the left fielder, just too shallow an for an advancement. Home. Yes, excellent throw home by the left fielder there in Ciceri. Who we saw have an error, two two errors in the outfield by the Wake Forest team and Deacon so far today. But Ciceri redeems himself there with a nice play and a nice throw home. And, and an excellent call by Gambino to hold the runner. That runner wanted to go, but Gambino urged him to stay. The right call, he would have been gunned down at home. That would have been a big issue for the inning. You know, I think that oftentimes folks do that, mock the uh, potentially running as – McNulty with a beautiful bunt. He gets one down. The first time we've seen a bunt get down, and it brings a run across. Great unselfish play there by McNulty. It's now 11-8. The Eagles getting another one back. Good play there by McNulty. We haven't seen someone be able to get a bunt down. Finally, he does so. Yeah, like we're saying, there's two more innings even after this. A run's a run, and cutting it down from 7-3 to three now. 
that's excellent work for this inning, and there's still potential to be had. So really just getting that extra run makes a big difference for the Eagles and their mindset. Just a really good sacrifice, Buck. So two outs now for Stallman stepping in with still a runner in scoring position as Landwehr moved up to second uh, with the bunt. So Golub now delivering. And that one will miss. And it is 2-0. Stallman a fan of that, I'm sure, as that one was borderline as well. Golub with a run. Check on the runner and delivering. And that one is in for a strike. 2-1 and one on Stallman. We are approaching three hours in this context, folks. I hope if you've been with us for five minutes or all three hours, I hope we're providing adequate coverage as this game has been a doozy as Stallman fouls it straight back. And if you are just tuning in with us, the score is 11-8 Wake Forest Demon Deacons. I guess I'll get your thoughts in the uh, in between innings when we have more time to discuss. But the Eagles... Surrendered seven runs in the top half of the seventh inning, but they have gotten four back here as Stallman faces a 2-2 count. And that one is bounced. Landwehr will advance. Great dirt ball read there by Landwehr. And now he's 90 feet closer, just 90 feet away from scoring and bringing the Eagles within two. Perhaps a wild pitcher pass ball. And certainly we've got a heck of a contest. Absolutely, yeah. Just this awareness and this re, uh, rejuvenation of spirit by the BC offense uh, is really coming to life here. And now even like a little droopy single would advance the runner home. So Stallman fouls that one back, and you're right. He takes anything. He takes anything to get the run across. So could see that here. Stallman just has to get the bat on it. I mean, at this point, if you're BC, you just have to be thinking one more, right? Like one more good opportunity, one more good pitch, and hopefully you get the right one at the right time. And Stallman with a heck of an at-bat. He fouls that one straight back. Absolutely. The eight-man putting up a fight. Love he to see it. He is battling. Golub now in the stretch. Peers in and delivers. Stallman swing and Stallman miss. So Golub gets out of it unscathed. Only surrenders the RBI sack bunt. And your score remains 11-8. But Michael, look, look ahead of these last two innings. Eagles chipped away at it uh, last time out. And you think they stick with Kuhn? I guess we'll get the answer now, and it doesn't appear that they are. No, he seemed very rattled. He seemed uh, very frustrated himself. Might be a good move to just take the ball out of his hand for the sitting. So the Eagles will go to a new arm themselves as we're seeing action now in the pen. All right, out of the bull with out of the bullpen. Brian McMongan, McMongle, McMonagale, McMonagale. Uh, I believe I was trying to listen to how our PA announcer pronounced it. We'll try to get you on the pronunciation guide. McMonagale. McMonagale. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Um, he'll come in now <clears throat> to face. The hitters three, four, five. So thrust into the fire now is McMonagay. Always his season high in innings pitched is two. He's only pitched seven all season and just three earned runs in those seven innings. So pretty good season being put together by McMonagay. As a freshman, he pitched relief in five games and appeared in three games as a sophomore. So McMonagale will have a chance to hold the Demon Deacons as they are. 
will be a tough duty, as we mentioned. Three, four, five coming up in this Demon Deacons ball club has shown the capability to pop off for impressive, impressive innings. And not great, folks. The heater has popped back on. The heater has popped back on in the top half of the eighth inning. Last time it spelled trouble for the Eagles. We'll see if it does the same. But McMonagall will come up now and face this high-powered Wake Forest Demon Deacons batting order. 3-4-5 with the three being Michael Tersoni and he'll take strike one. Tersoni one for three today with a walk and he is now even at one and one as McMonagall misses outside. The righty comes set and delivers. Herky jerky motion, and that one's into the gap. Tersoni will have a chance to run. This one could be three, and that's what he wants. He slowed a little at second, but he'll have no problem beating the throw. A triple for Michael Tersoni. Not the best start for the Eagles after they got four of the seven runs back. And all of a sudden, Demon Deacon's threatening again. And the one man who's had the triple now notches his fourth of the season. So really a concentrated sample in the uh, Demon Deacon staff. There you go. And you asked me if I'd ever see a triple in person. Fair enough. <laughs> I just look at that out. But <laughs> yep. So Tinsman now up to the plate. He'll have a job to do infield playing up. He will shoot one into... The left center gap, this one carrying, carrying, and gone. Tinsman with a home run. The Demon Deacons with their third of the game. The fifth of the game total for both sides. And just like that, it is opened back up to a 13-8 ball game. Make no mistake, that is an absolute gut shot to the BC team. There is still time, however. Yes, that's the beauty about baseball. Demon Deacon still have to get six outs. And that ball looked like a long fly that was going to be caught, but it just carried and carried and made its way over the wall. Carried Again, its way out of here. It's the, the tail of two cities, the tail of two sides of this baseball field. The Demon Deacons are hitting shots to the left, and the BC Eagles are hitting shots to the right. And we see it again. We'll get another homer in the one direction that counts. Yep, as Tinsman popped that one out of here. Now Ciceri steps up in a big hack and miss. He wanted to do the same thing, but to no avail. Count is one and one as Monagel faces Ciceri. A big swing and a miss again. A good change up there. As now McMonagall is up. One and two on the hitter. One hit for the series today, one RBI. He has struck out. And he'll dribble that one foul. Down by the Eagles bullpen. Tough for McMonagall now, who just entered the ball game to give up two quick hits a triple and a home run and now all of a sudden you still got to get three outs reset is that your mindset as he misses there yeah absolutely you still have to think about it as a um opportunity by opportunity basis and yeah, i mean of course like you know being down five now as opposed to three that's a that's a step in the wrong direction but you know you still have two more chances to swing the bat and got to make the most of those opportunities so i think that's the message that the eagles need to have right now and they also need to focus on getting back to those bats. So just making good plays, not getting in their head on defense, and not making the errors. We've seen my course make a few times already this game. 
Yeah, absolutely. As McMonagall appeared, had a good chance at getting strike three there, but it was not called. Just a little outside. We shouldn't. Again, Collins, we're not meaning to harp on him, but we've just seen Gambino have a couple discussions with him, so we know that perhaps his calls have been questionable as McMonagall will miss and there then, and walk the hitter. You'd be tempted by this game to just think the main story is the booming shots from both sides, but the real critical thing is the strike zone and also Wake Forest's ability to get those walks from wherever the strike zone is. It's just a recurring theme, and yet again we see it. There's a reason why they lead the ACC and they're on the top half nationally. They're just very, very good, and credit to their hitting coach about being able to articulate the strikes and balls as they come in and handle it accordingly. Yeah, says so that one missed outside, and we have seen the the walk totals creep up in the last two innings for the visitors. That is now six total for the game with eight strikeouts uh, as McMonagall gets that one even uh, to even up the count. The Eagles, on the other hand, have one walk. So, like you said, Wake Forest, fourth in the nation in walks, and that's certainly playing a role as McMonagall misses again to make the count two and one. The lights are starting to be turned on as – we're approaching past seven o'clock now. We are past seven o'clock, I should say, and it will get dark soon as McMonagall misses. And now Eagles starting to get a little movement in the pen. I wonder if this inning, this half inning goes a while, if the Demon Deacons will consider the same. A pitch, and McMonagall has walked two in a row now. And, and that brings the difference to six overall. Yeah. A mighty difference in the game. We consider that a walk and a hit. The only difference is the potential for extra base movement. That's paramount, to being able to score with runners in uh, positions that are favorable. Yeah, as Jake uh, Reisnick just took that walk, and Pierce Bennett now stepping in. Bennett himself one hit thus far it seems like every single batter in this wake forest lineup has a hit and if you were thinking that you would be right with the exception of danny corona as the eagles will now have a conference on the mound and so what do you think is the message here at this point how do you how do you relay with with no outs and in a position where, like, things just really aren't looking good. How do you try to, like, basically right the ship? Yeah, I think it could be difficult. But, again, double plays in order. Mm -hmm. Get a ground ball. Get things out. Get, get them out of here. And uh, then you got one out left to go. I, I think that. If you're Wake Forest, do you consider a bunt with no outs? I, I'd say Where's look that? how Stallman's playing uh, and look how Vetrano's playing at the corners. You don't want to take the bat out of uh, Bennett's hands mm -hmm. uh, knowing that he is but in the interest of moving up the runner to score position and alleviating the double play. That, that's that's the idea. That's true. That's true. And that's a great point by you. Um, Certainly now. I mean, if you can get an extra run on top of five, that just becomes more and more difficult to break with two innings left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've seen how good the Wake Forest pen has looked, or at least oh, that's that. <laughs> at least Golub and we have a hit batsman the first pitch of this at bat. So it looks like Burns is a tad shaking up because I think that that ball ricocheted off of Pierce Bennett and then hit Burns oh, yeah. in the arm. And now Gambino will come out to check on him. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like Burns is going to shrug off any any medical attention. He's a tough guy. I think there's a level of due diligence. The medical trainer, if he's, if he's having issues, why not just take a second and see? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the health and safety of players is paramount in this situation. Absolutely. 
Well, you know, as a senior catcher, he wants to be out there to the very end. Mm -hmm. Go Monty Python and cut the arms off. He'd still be fighting to the death. So Burns now thrown back to McMonagall, showing his arm and looks like he, he will probably be all right to continue. He will, <clears throat> but certainly not a comfortable situation there to take a ball off the arm. So we got bases loaded, no outs, and the left-hander, Danny Corona, stepping in, the second baseman, who does have an RBI, but does not have a hit. So that means that every single Wake Forest player on this roster either has a hit or an RBI, and just like that, we'll have a pitching change. So McMonagall comes out. And we will see who's stepping in for the Eagles. Still awaiting. It looks like Matthew Noonan will be the new arm for the Eagles, the left-hander. So he'll face the left-hander, Corona, and then Hawk is a left-hander, and then Kurtz is a left-hander. So three left-handers. Back to back to back in an ideal situation, you get Noonan to get all three of these guys. We think and we go three outs for one run here. I feel like that's a good trade off. Yeah, I think so. You know, uh, with a run with bases loaded now, it seems as though, especially with the hot bats of Wake Forest, that a run coming across is inevitable. I think you have to value outs over runs uh, mm -hmm. now, just with knowing how hot they've been. Absolutely, it only makes the task harder on offense, but you can't be on offense unless you get outs on defense. Yeah, so, so it's a really tough position to be in overall. Exactly. With that being said, I I mean I think the corners will be in. Middle infield back, uh, double play depth. We have Noonan coming in, who's pitched four and a third, surrendered four earned runs on the season. His last outing was against Mary Mack on Wednesday, where he went an inning of work, struck out two, walked one. So the freshman will come in. That was in a 16 to four win, like we talked about. He also came in against Louisville last Sunday and surrendered two earned runs in an inning of work. So Noonan's capable with a strikeout. He has seven strikeouts to just two walks on the season and certainly a good situation here to be able to face three straight lefties. But we'll see if we'll get any lineup changes. It doesn't appear that we will. It looks like Danny Corona and Tommy Hawk are the – Demon Deacons on deck, both freshmen, like we talked about, and freshmen facing freshmen. Here we go. Noonan just 12 pitches used on Wednesday to get out of that work, and that's especially impressive when you consider he walked a guy and had two strikeouts, so that makes no sense. So that is probably not accurate. I am perhaps looking at the wrong. I wonder what NP. Because hmm. <laughs> walking and striking out too would mean that he pitched at least 10, 10 pitches. So I guess it is possible. It's just highly unlikely. So yeah. Noonan only threw 12 pitches against Merrimack. Wow. And had two strikeouts. So, and a walk. Okay, so, so that's 10 guaranteed pitches. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So here we go with Noonan. In, no, all, all the infield is in. So the middle infield is not at short uh, double play depth. And a big hack there by Danny Corona. You have to imagine he's he knows that he's the only Wake Forest Demon Deacon without a hit in this one, and he wants to change that. And you know his buddies on the bench are rooting for him to get on the board as well. Absolutely. This Demon Deacons ball club seems to be very well connected, as we mentioned, their home run celebration. 
They've certainly had time to do it today. Three home runs. Oh, absolutely. We can see where their 20 run games come from. Yeah. They're well on their way here if all runners score or a big hit occurs. Noonan misses there. It's now two and one. The lefty. And so credit to the BC um the BC fielders just continuing to fight. I mean, I mean a lot of people feel pretty disheartened about this game. They would uh more or less call it quits, but these guys are professionals and they have to stick it out and they want to stick it out and they want to see their team win. So they're gonna keep going. Absolutely. And Corona just fouled that one back. So now a two-two count on the hitter. Noonan will have a chance to retire him. You think high outside, try to get him to chase. You think it down low and away. You think it inside. What are you thinking? Here? I think it's too close to the two-two count to to waste one here. But we'll see. Noonan delivers, and that one catches the corner for a called third strike. Great, great piece of pitching there. And our boy Danny Taylor Collins did. comes in clutch. Yeah. You think Danny Collins wants to get out of here? This has been a, a long contest hey, he already. Might, he might have a uh, 8 o'clock reservation he needs to hurry up and get to. <laughs> no, nah, but jokes aside, what an excellent pitch on the corner and really a good out to get there for sure. Absolutely. So another lefty, Tommy Hawk, who just made the crucial error in center that would have saved Wake Forest a run. We'll see if he redeems himself here and gets a hit. Another great pitch catches the outside corner. Great piece of pitching by Noonan. He's honing in on that corner, Michael. Mm -hmm. Honing in on that corner and keeping it away from lefty bats. We saw Hawk be able to go to that left side, a little nice piece of oppo, oppo hitting earlier today, and he'll foul that one back. He waits back on it. But certainly, if you keep the ball away from lefty lefty batters, I, I mean, you could ask. I personally had a preference of pulling the ball all the time and too much. But if I they try to – I think that's a tendency to swing yep. through, right, and get that pull. Yeah. If they try to uh, pull that outside pitch, they're just going to roll over and could be double play to second as that one just missed outside. Hawk with a good eye. That one did look a little further outside than the last couple. So certainly the strike zone not broadening too much as Noonan delivers. And a swing and a miss. Hawk will be retired. And it's good technical work to keep those runners from advancing down the line. Yep. So now we've got top. The top of the order, Nick Kurtz, two hits on the day, including a double. He's walked once, he's struck out once in his sixth at-bat of the day. Still no RBIs. It's tougher for the leadoff guy to get RBIs. He scores all the runs. He's got two runs scored as Noonan misses. He'll try to retire the side after being in quite the predicament, second and third, no outs, and if you escape this, that's that's pretty impressive. Perhaps that is why the middle infield was not at double play depth because it was second and third and not bases loaded, as I mm -hmm. alluded to. Uh, if you take a look at the first five batters in this Deacon Deacons ball, ball club, or if you go back from nine all the way up to five hole, each of those players have scored two runs. Quite impressive for the Demon Deacons, and that's what happens when you score 14 runs. Everyone's crossing the plate, and lots of guys have done it twice. A couple guys have done it once. Corona, like we mentioned, the only guy not to, as he has not reached base yet, 0 for 5, but does have an RBI. Kurtz, who struck out last time with a chance now to have some RBIs, but he's down 1 and 2. Noonan delivers. Bounces it. Nice play by Burns. That's why he's in there. He knows mm -hmm. he's capable of that. And, and there's the technique to keep it on the line so the runner knows that he can't even come down if he wanted to. Just really, really good stuff that you see a senior catcher who has those reps at the plate. 
So Noonan out of the stretch, trying to work his magic, getting three straight strikeouts. Can he do it? He delivers. And I think he just did. Yes, he did. Three strikeouts in a row by Tyler Noonan. Gets the Eagles out of a jam. And they will go to bat. Excuse me. I was calling him Tyler Noonan. Matthew Noonan. I really apologize. I hope his family is not listening tonight. But Matthew Noonan <laughs> is able to get out of the jam. Quite the performance by Noonan. So 9-1-2 for the Eagles, who got four runs back, then surrendered three. So down six. Six is the deficit for the Eagles, as Golub will remain in the game. Gabe Golub, who after last inning has dipped his ERA sub one. How about that? Yeah, it's a guy who's good at stuff, and he's good, and he's good with it. Although Crawford Way had a good ERA, and that is subject to take a hit. So maybe the uh, Eagles can do some damage on his ERA as well. Yes, you could look at it as it's it's due for – he's a due correction. for giving up runs. Yes. So certainly something to keep an eye on. Golub will have a righty and then two lefties. So like we talked about, that matchup at the top of the order for the Eagles – Certainly something that could give this righty a run for his money. Temperature outside still above 50 degrees, but certainly less comfortable than it was at first pitch. Careful, don't tempt the heater. That's true. But every time I tempt the heater, it turns on for the Wake Forest bats so maybe if i do it for the eagles bats it could could doom well it's not out of the question at this point so here we go walsh stepping in he will face golub golub quickly delivers walsh takes strike one Chalumet waits on deck. The Eagles down to the last six outs in this one. 14 to 8 is your score. If you like runs, this would be the game for you. Walsh bounces that one foul 0 and 2. We had a maybe a little bit of a proxy with a pitcher's duel between the second and fifth inning, but ever since the fifth inning, this has been a firework show. And this game has really had a lot of elements that are traditionally separated across different games. It's been a it's been a joy to watch. Of course, we're a little bum that the Eels are down in the hole by six, but there's still time and there's still hope. And, you know, these bats right here can do it right now. Absolutely. As Walsh takes one up, the leadoff man, so important. Shaw Meg got it started last inning with a single. We'll see if Walsh can duplicate that. As he'll ground this one a short, hard hit, but a routine play for the shortstop Tor Torsini. One away. Quick work done there by Golub. Rafe Shalumet stepping in. Two hits on the day for Shalumet. Props to him who's been thrust into duty with the injury to, Ty to Tyler Honeyman. Travis Honeyman, excuse me. So Chalumet stepping in, takes the first one a strike, and he'll foul the second one back. 0-2, and again, Golub likes to work ahead. We've seen it multiple times, and he's done it again. I blew it. Chalumet career high of three hits against Holy Cross earlier this season. He'll try to match that but takes a high strike. He doesn't like it. I doubt Coach Gambino liked it. And it is two away in the bottom half of the eighth. Cameron Leary, though, stepping in. How about this performance by Leary? A home run. He's now homered in three straight games. 
dating back to the UConn game on Thursday. And he tried to go one there again. You rarely see freshmen thrust into duty, and obviously Wake Forest being the uh, the exception to that. But Leary was in that spot last year as he swings through. And 0-2 now is your count. Leary was the exception for this Eagles ball club. He got some work last year and made well with it. He's now done even more as a sophomore. As he'll take a ball there. We mentioned Leary's success off the top. Something that has been impressive as he will take a ball low now. The lefty started 24 of 29 games he played last year in the outfield. He had his moments, two home runs, 13 RBIs, and now he's already at 11 home runs. He'll take that ball low in the dirt, and now he's worked the count full. Gold awaits on deck. He is from New York, as we mentioned, multiple guys from New York on this Eagles ball club, and he'll take a ball right there to get on base once again. Quite the day for Cameron Leary. He's now reached base three times. One time, I guess he didn't even reach base. He just homered, so that wouldn't even count. Luke Gold stepping in. Double last time. Two for three today. So Gold will try to keep the, any semblance of life alive for the Eagles here in the eighth, but he'll pop that one up. Play by the first baseman is made. Right in front of the pitcher's mound, of course. Pitcher never wants to make the play, and Golub got out of the way there, and he is out of any trouble. So no hits, one left on for the Eagles, and now we'll head to the top of the ninth. Your score, Demon Deacons, 14, Eagles, eight we'll see if we have a pitching change or not i doubt it as matthew noonan had quite the performance last inning and he'll step back out three strikeouts last time by noonan wake forest bats now in their sixth Try at the dish. Wilkin stepping in. Long ball, Brock Wilkin. Two home runs today. The Eagles certainly don't want to see another. Noonan continues his warm ups. As we have reached darkness here at the Harry. Crowd thinning out, but decent showing overall. And we appreciate all stepping in that have come out today. We had a decent amount of students at the game. And certainly we hope that that continues this weekend. Two more between these two ball clubs. One tomorrow at 2 and one tomorrow at, uh, and one Sunday at noon. So the ACC series rolls on, but guess who's coming to play, Michael? Who's that? Brock Longball Wilkin. Oh, boy. Seeking to do it again. Didn't have the oh. success he wanted last time. Struck out looking. Yes. How about this? Three strikeouts, two home runs. That's the trend we're seeing now in baseball. Uh, he's a uh, three, uh, three outcome guy all the way, huh? Yes, he is, as he takes – a strike there. I mean, Noonan. you can't argue with two homers and seven RBIs. <laughs> no, that that <laughs> doesn't need much uh, much 
qualms, I have a feeling, for this Wake Forest coaching staff as Wilkin takes a ball to even up the count. Mm-hmm. Noonan delivers. Wilkin, a drive center field, but this one won't be as deep. It keeps carrying, but Walsh was able to track it down. That wind is blowing out. Yeah, it seemed like it could be a situation similar to the last one run where it just kept going and going and going, although – it's in the next velocity and the um, just the sheer uh, angle of the upward swing maybe made it a little too too far to reach. But yeah, definitely a nice to swing in the bat. So now the three hole. Michael Tersoni stepping in two hits today, including a triple. Yes, Mister Triple now with four in the season, the only guy on the Deacon squad to have more than one. Actually, more than zero. How about that? Yeah. Could be a little trivia fact down south for the <laughs> folks uh, in Carolina. I'm sure they're using that on the nationally broadcast. This game was on ACC Network Extra. We were the only radio call tonight, so I hope we've had a good amount of fans listening, and we appreciate your support as Matthew Noonan now trying to get out of this. Great play by Luke Gold, but he can't get the speedy – Tersoni, as you mentioned, he is the guy with the triples, and he's also the guy that has three stolen bases, and only two other guys on the ball club have more than one stolen base themselves. So Tersoni will perhaps put the wheels in motion. Not tonight, I don't think, because it's a six-run lead for the Eagles, but good piece of two-strike hitting there as looked like Noonan was going to be able to retire him. But to no avail, and now he starts off the four-hole hitter, Brendan Tinsman, with a strike. The catcher has done a phenomenal job behind the dish for the Demon Deacons. We haven't seen any pass balls tonight or what? That appeared to be pitches. an intentional pitch outside, don't you think? The catcher was up and moving as that pitch came in. Maybe it was either wild or outside, but could have been a call pitch if the runner would take off. Yeah, I think that might have just been the way he uh, picked it up. Picked it up, yeah, handled it as Noonan delivers, and that one will miss inside. Uh, but awareness there by Burns to check on the runner, see if he had taken too big of a secondary lead. But Noonan working fast here. He steps, comes set, and will fire high, and again, Burns has to check on the runner. You can that hear one? that pop, too. That was wow. a pop. That was a significant pop for Noonan popping the glove in there. We don't have a velocity on that, but look to – can safely say that was over 40 miles an hour. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that one is lying down the right field line. This one's trouble. Into the corner it goes. Leary tracks it Tersoni down. already around third. Tersoni – Coming in, and he will score. Noonan with a good backup to prevent any further damage as Tinsman doubles. He could have advanced to third as the throw got behind Burns, but now 15 to 8 is your score. Yeah. Not a great day for the Boston College pitching staff. So, really, this um, this kind of speaks volumes about how Wake Forest played this relentlessly push. I mean, a lot of teams here that might become complacent, they might just start swinging and stuff. They might be, you know, checking their reservation, making sure they're going to be on time for wherever they're going. But no, these guys, they value their at-bats. We know that from their walks and their discipline at the plate. And they see this as opportunities to continue to grow the game. They also know if they scored seven runs in one inning, who's to say BC doesn't do that as well. And they're just trying to make sure they're in the best position to win this game. Exactly. You never know with baseball. Still three outs left to get for mm-hmm. the Demon Deacons. The Eagles – Two outs away from getting out of this. Yeah, when your back's up against the wall, uh, you know, you swing the bat a little differently. Exactly, as Noonan now starts the better off with a strike, and he'll be ahead 0-2 now. Tinsman just got that that one to hook down the line, and by the time Leary grabbed it, it was right in front of the foul pole. Uh, Trickled down there. That's kind of the backspin that the ball had. Carried him all the way there. Long run and a double. Could have been a triple, perhaps in a in a closer game. Advanced on a throw type thing. Mm-hmm. Well, 
just even getting there. Um, but Tinsman holds up at second, and Noonan now up one and two still on the hitter. So Noonan in the stretch. Ciceri awaits the pitch. He's down one and two, the lefty on lefty matchup. The pitch, and that one is lined into the gap, but Walsh runs it down. Tinsman is tagging. He'll get to third without contest, and now two away. That one looked like it could hook away from Walsh, but he was able to corral it. Perhaps the wind keeping it near him. So we've got two away. One more, and Reisnick is your Demon Deacon batter. Noonan out of the stretch. He'll face a lefty on lefty again. Certainly favorable as he'll get the college strike in there on Reisnick. Come set, working fast. Another run 90 feet away. Noonan in there. Again, he's up 0-2. We'll see if he can put the batter away. Coming set. Firing. Burns with a stop. That could have been trouble. You got to give credit to Peter Burns. He's had a phenomenal, phenomenal game. He homered at the dish and... Behind the plate. Took an absolute shot, refused to even be looked at. Yep. I mean, this is just the attitude of a leader, a guy who's a senior who wants to see his team, even through sheer willpower, advance and do well. This is a guy who just he believes in this team and he wants to see what can happen tonight. Absolutely. As Noonan battling now, he is even up the count two and two. Eagles with a little action in the pen in case things go awry, but Noonan fires. That will be a ground ball to second. Gold gloves it over to first. Noonan out of the inning, and overall, pretty good outing by Matthew Noonan. Under circumstances, yes. You know, I this, think it's a matter of getting from point A to point B. Yep. This Demon Deacons ball club can swing the bats and obviously they're 15 runs show for it, but noonan only surrendered one of those uh in two innings of work and got out of a jam and again strands a runner at third second straight time he stranded a runner in that position so looks like the demon deacons could have some roster moves here uh in terms of substitutions looks like we've got a new arm as well so we do in that regard. It is number 20, Derek Crum, the lefty out of Tampa, Florida. He's a redshirt sophomore. This is his third season. Technically, I guess a COVID sophomore is what they would say. Pitched in 12 and a third, surrendered three earned runs. So again, this bullpen is nothing to sneeze at for the Demon Deacons. No, if you had this in the MLB, you would be laughing your way to the World Series every year. These guys have legitimate, serious, backed-up stats against qualified opponents. And we've seen that with the exception of Crawford, who had maybe a few mishaps with his fielders. These guys have come in, and they've more or less locked this game down since the first. Yeah, so Crumb steps in. He last pitched on Wednesday in the last outing against Coastal Carolina had two-thirds inning of work, but he did surrender a, a earned run in that ball game, and he had two walks. So perhaps the move here to put him in is strategic by Tom Walter, trying to get him to have three outs and boost that confidence a little bit. Yeah. We'll see if the Eagles have any – one in terms of pinch hitters coming up to the plate. It doesn't appear right now as Vetrano stepping in. The lefty. 
from a lefty in his own right. So this is a tough matchup for the Toronto. Here we go. It's do or die. Three outs away from a win for Wake Forest, which would bring them to five and five in ACC play and monumental swing. Seven runs away from a crazy comeback for the Eagles, but good start by Crum. And after tonight, getting ahead, nothing necessarily is off the table at this point. We've seen some wild things occur. We really have. As that one misses, perhaps a cross up with the catcher. Crum working out of the windup and working fast. But Toronto wants to get himself another hit. He is yet to have one today. But he did score a run. Two strikeouts, both in pretty crucial spots. And he hasn't he does not have the RBI. So yes, you're right. Going back, that double play nullifies the RBI. Yes, that double play nullifies that RBI. Uh, so technically, a run scored while he was at bat, but again, not a good run. <laughs> grounding into the double play. You were right. So, Vetrano fouls that one back. We'll have a full count here on him. As Crum trying to get that all important lead out, when you're trying to mount a comeback like the Eagles have to. Vetrano being on base is just great for morale, number one. And the difference between a guy on first with no outs and a guy stepping up with one outer, it's night and day. Exactly. So see that right now, he'll take first. Yep. So Vetrano walks, and now Landwehr will step in. Landwehr has had some success today. Three hits. He is the DH. And for good reason, his bat will most likely stay in the lineup tomorrow, I have to imagine. Could catch, like we mentioned, he is a catcher. Burns taking a beating with a long game tonight, but again, he's a warrior. Crum delivering inside for a ball. So 1-0 on Landwehr. Vetrano at first. Crum comes set and delivers in there for a strike. Great pitch on the inside corner. Can't really do much with that. Mm -hmm. Cannot do much with that. Looks like we'll have Ramon Jimenez on deck for the Eagles. He'd take the place of Peter Burns. Interesting. So seeing now with the catcher being swapped out with the ninth inning, that is a uh, interesting call by the Gambinos. Mm -hmm. Again, I like it. So 2 and one now on Landwehr. This is the last thing you want if you're crumb to walk, guys. Wanted to put it in play, and Landwehr does so. Out to right field, carrying, and the right fielder makes the play. Pierce Bennett able to retire him, and we'll have one away. But that one had some life for a short time he's also on the right side of the field like we've been saying yeah magical things seem to happen when you pick the right side and the left side depending on who you are yep yep so ramon jimenez stepping in majority of his action has been seen in this role as a pinch hitter he has five hits in 21 at bats this season, and he'll take a ball to begin things. Two doubles for Jimenez, so capable of that extra base hit. Crumb working fast, delivering and outside on Jimenez. Petrano still at first, McNulty still on deck, so no change there, but. Jimenez in for Burns. Crum delivers in there for a called strike. Right at the knees. The Demon Deacons will be back here tomorrow for a second game of the series beginning at 2 p.m. Sean Hand, your probable starter for the Eagles. 
as Crum working quick and now has even the count on Jimenez. Comes set, delivers. Jimenez fouls it. Good battle. And the fight stays alive. Good battle by Jimenez. Got to give credit. It's been sitting, sitting around for three and a half plus hours and now thrust into action. It's got to be a tough situation. Jimenez will take that one in the dirt. So a full count on Jimenez. We'll see if they put Landwehr in motion. Or Vitrano in motion, excuse me. Most likely not in a deficit this big. Jimenez lines one wow, into in left. How about that? Ramon Jimenez with a hit. And now first and second for McNulty. There's that due diligence or that diligence of sticking with the at-bat, staying true to it, waiting for that right pitch, fouling back the ones that were tough to get off, but you knew were in the strike zone and gets it through that gap right there. Exactly. And on deck, we'll have Daniel, Daniel Baruch uh, for the Eagles. He will be a pinch hitter as well. So – Couple of changes. He'll go in for Stallman, but McNulty now up. Crum has surrendered a hit and a walk this inning. He'll deliver low and in on McNulty. So Jimenez is capable. He's had three hits as his career high. Had a couple doubles last season in the first series of the season against Duke and keeps the momentum alive. McNulty, the freshman, now tasked with doing the same. <laughs> we will get some main... Uh, we will get ball Baruch on deck, and yes, as you mentioned, McNulty looks at ball two. Baruch with two hits against Merrimack. In a home run on Wednesday. So Baruch's got a little hot bat, and you never know what could happen if he gets on uh, McNulty, that is, as he takes strike one and little grand slam. Suddenly, this would be a three run ball game, and you never know. But you might need some of that long shot mentality to come mm -hmm. in here. And, uh, you know, Brock needs to maybe, you know, put on a different uniform. Certainly, <laughs> uh, you know. Find a substitution out of a transfer student potentially. So McNulty now trying to do his job of keeping this game alive. He'll foul that one back. Interesting. And now with a two-two count, do you think the runners start to take bigger leads, or do you think at this point they don't? Doesn't matter. You know, I think they got to be. Uh, you know, no one's holding them on, but uh, I think if you're Vitrana, you got to be able to score. On a single, and that's exactly what McNulty just did. He Brown singles and, and holds, him. holds him at third. I think that's that was ball. just an attempt by uh, Coach Gambino to be cautious there with Baruch because you never want to have the send last. The guy to his death. Yeah, exactly. And you never want that out to be recorded at home plate. So Baruch now in. Interesting choice of music. And his walk-up song is a little jazz. And again, like we mentioned, he homered against Merrimack on Wednesday. We'll see if he can keep that same luck here. The pitch in there just at the letters. I think Baruch was taking all the way there. Yeah. Taking until he gets a strike most likely. That's probably what these Eagles hitters will do. Barry Walsh still on deck. Baruch, a 111 batting average this year. Crum misses. Can't stress this enough. Crum has had a good year, but he didn't have a good outing last time against Coastal Carolina and again struggling with the Eagles tonight. A couple hits and a walk. Leads the bases to be loaded. Crum comes set and will fire a ball low. Interesting. Baruch so again, with probably, life. Probably taking here, yeah. So heading two and into, one. Heading into a potential three-one-two-two two count. Yeah. 
So you think they'll take till two strikes? Maybe. You know, it's seven unless run deficit. They, unless they find a pitch that they really like, it's an opportunity to wait. And so Baruch was not taking. He swings big hack, and I like their aggressiveness. That one was at the letters. Mm -hmm. He swung and swung through it, but a big hack. Not a respectable swing. Respectable swing. He's got eight strikeouts on the season and 18 at bat. So hoping to not continue that trend. And he doesn't. He'll line that one and he'll be down. And this one could score too. It will. Jimenez chugging. And this game is 15 to 10. Just like that. There's life. How about that? So Barry Walsh, nine hole, trying to keep this game alive. Combined 25 runs in this contest. How about that, Michael? Your first broadcast, you get to see 25 runs. I know. Not all baseball games are like this, but uh, it's been an absolute privilege and an absolute treat in the booth. So we'll now have a conference with the pitcher. <laughs> and I don't think what are they gonna we're going to have a change. Again, it looks like we've had some we're, – we're getting some action in the pen, worst case. But that is not something this, this way for us. Cut to three. We might see a change. Mm -hmm. I think that's the uh, ramification. Or two. Yep. Okay. So the, the tying runs in the hole here. So, yeah, you're right. It just I think that all important, we talked about that all important first out. The second out, I think, is crucial as well. everything. Once you get that second out, I think that life is kind of halted. Uh, You're on life support. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Totally agree. Walsh trying to keep that some semblance. And, of course, the double play is not to jinx it, but it's an ever-present threat on both the third and second bags at this point. You're so right. So the fielders need to be aware of it. They need to move quick. You are right. Or runners, excuse me. Or multiple fielders, too. Mm-hmm. So Walsh trying to do his job like the past hitters in front of him. He's 0 of 4 today. Again, folks, if you're just tuning in or have tuned in all night, we appreciate you. But it is 15 to 10, your score here tonight. The Eagles and the Demon Deacons as Crum delivers to Walsh, and that one misses outside. Walsh climbs back in. Crumb out of the stretch. Runners will be on the move with a ball on the ground as Walsh takes again. I think if you get a walk, you could see a change as well. Maybe. 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 With the top of the order, the top of the order is on deck. Shayumet awaits and with the strike. Strike. It is crucial also to note, again, the lefty lefties at the top of the Eagles lineup. We're yet to see if Coach Campino will make a switch in that department. He's already gone to his bench a couple times. As Crum comes set and delivers, and Walsh will foul that one off. We head to a 2 2 count. So the count is even, two and two. One out. In this contest, in the bottom of the ninth, the Eagles trying to mount a fierce comeback. Crooked numbers all across the board today, folks. Crum comes set. He'll deliver. And yeah, that one misses ball, outside. How about that? Walsh takes and... This is an all-important full count here on Walsh. Crum, try not to lose him. He'll fire. Walsh swings through it. That yeah, could have been ball four. Two. That could have been ball four. He swung through it, and now two outs. That's got to boost Crum's confidence. Absolutely. Now he's going to be way more willing to go inside and throw that heat up high and down well. Expect the first pitcher to be coming quick, coming hard, coming inside. 
So Rafe Shalumet steps in. A lefty facing another on the mound. Crum. Sure enough, high inside. Yes, and the umpire has taken a tumble. That is not what you want to see. He took that one to the body, and that's got to hurt. And you can see the catcher is really broken up about it. Well, the catcher runs out to give him some time. As now, this is not what you want to see, especially with one out remaining. Where I couldn't tell where he got hit. It was in his chest or something. Yeah, I, I imagine he got hit lower than that. Like the the catcher's right in front of him. I cannot tell. I think on the arm, perhaps. I think it was a face. Well, he's got that mask. So. No, but still, the impact. Oh, wow, and he's going to battle through. How about this? It's the Burns and the Collins show behind home plate. That's toughness, Top folks. Tougher. That is toughness, and that pitch was a ball. Uh, so we've got a 1-0 count. Second and third for the Eagles as Baruch advanced on the wild pitch. And we've got a pitch into Chalumet as a strike. You best believe everything's coming across as a strike at this point. <laughs> I mean, he's got to be. That's got to be stinging. And I, I think that if this game had two more innings, perhaps he wouldn't tough it out. But knows the end is near. And that one hit Ooh. Chalumet. Wow. So Crum loses him. And now Leary stepping up. If Leary gets on, the tying run comes to the plate. And we're going to get a pitching change. Oh, that seems a bit excessive. So we're going to get a pitching change now against Leary. Imagine if this kid comes in, like, bombs it. Yeah, here we go. I mean, the Eagles, they wanted a chance, and they're getting the chance. Crum gave it to them. Absolutely opened the door. So we'll have a new pitcher. New pitcher in for the Demon Deacons. We'll try to find out who it is. For you, looks like number 14, Camden Minasi. Another Tampa, Florida guy made 23 appearances last season as a true freshman. Thus far this season, 20 and a third innings pitched, three earned runs, a 1 3 3 ERA. The righty. They just keep getting better and better, man. They really do. It's and a testament to the recruiting talent as well of the Wake Forest, the pitching staff, to be able to find and harness that talent. It's no accident every reliever in that bullpen has exceptional stats and produced on the field this year. Absolutely. And he's got some heat. I think that. If you're a guy coming in, this you know you have a five-run buffer, but also bases are loaded, so tying run on deck. Oh, at this point, you're just trying to get the out. You have no responsibility besides the guy at the plate, mm -hmm. so your ERA is not in jeopardy. The only thing you want is to end this game. Yep. You're not concerned yep. if it's by one or by two or by three. And we're now approaching four hours in this contest. That's what baseball does to you, huh? Yeah. First broadcast and 25 runs, four-hour game. I will, I will say uh makes me respect Tom Karen for doing the bean pot back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Takes a lot out of you. Absolutely. To have that energy still at the very end. Yeah. Takes a lot out of you for sure. Here we go. So Minasi finishing up his final pitches. We mentioned he's given up three earned runs all year. Two of those came against Elon all the way back on March 1st, so a month ago. And now he'll face Leary, who will have a chance to hit yet another home run and make things really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now the catcher will consult with Minasi. Before we begin this at bat, 
This is your – if you're a baseball player, this is what you live for. You know that's going to be – You're long. batting at the plate. Balls yep. in your hand this whole game. Yep. So – We see the second baseman doing high knees. Yep, trying to, stay, trying loose. to stay loose. Trying to stay loose. The weather getting colder outside. And Leary stepping in. The Eagles down to their final out. Here we go. Manasi delivers. Outside a for a ball. Camden Manasi, a sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. The righty. Out of the windup. Facing Leary Hill fire, and that will be in for a strike. Wake Forest faithful cheering them on. They want to get out of here as much as anyone else probably. But this one's a doozy, and we're sticking around for you. That one's in for a ball. Just missed. Very similar spot, but not getting the call. Yep, just missed. Now a 2-1, I have to imagine. What do you think? Hold here? I think be aggressive, especially with Leary's... Leary's capability to drive the ball, and he'll swing and just miss it. Fouled it straight back. So now the Eagles down to their final strike of the day. Wake Forest on their feet, as are we. Leary. Standing in the pitch. Swing and a miss. And Manasi gets it done. The four-hour marathon has concluded. And, folks, we appreciate you all tuning in with us. Tomorrow, these two teams will be back for the second game of the series at 2 p.m. here at the Harry, the Harrington Athletic Village, beautiful home to the Boston College baseball and softball teams. And, Michael, Final thoughts. 15 to 10 is your score tonight. Wake Forest out hitting the Eagles 16 to 14. Two errors for the Demon Deacons and one for Boston College. Absolutely. I think uh, oh, okay, um, <laughs> I think there's uh, something to be said about fundamentals. Obviously, in most baseball games, fundamentals are what make or break games, and this game is no exception. Certainly excellent hitting played a part, excellent pitching played a part, base running was critical in moments. Fielding was a very hot topic throughout this game. And we see all these factors in the end culminate and Wake Forest taking this victory. Yes, and folks, thank you for tuning in with us. Have a great evening. We will see you soon.